This is the Albert Tibby Cotter pedestrian bridge in Moore Park. It was officially opened in February this year, but here we are at the back end of July and it still isn't finished. It's the wrong solution in the wrong place. But let's just concentrate on the cost. A staggering $38 million. The Tibby Cotter is basically a lightweight, bolt together steel structure on simple concrete piers with a deck of thin precast concrete sheets. At either end there are short sections of mass concrete. It's six metres wide and only has to carry pedestrians and cyclists, so there's not much material and the engineering is unchallenging. The bridge was a captain's pick by Rhodes Minister Duncan Go It Alone Gay. Like Gay's tiny pedestrian tunnel in Arncliff, the one that cost more than a high school, the job was awarded without going to tender, this time to Lendlease. Should it really cost $38 million? Let's take a reality check. The Rolls-Royce Index. $38 million by $79. But actually, if you had a cool 38 mil to spend, they'd probably throw in a few more. Next, the high school index. For 38 mil, two country towns could have had brand new high schools and there'd have been 8 million in change. Or what about a library for a regional university? Southern Cross Uni got a spiffy new three-storey library and the refurbishment of the old one as a science and engineering precinct for 38 million. And if you feel like getting into big box retailing, just 27 million buys you a whole new 11,500 square metre Bunnings warehouse. But all the New South Wales taxpayer gets for 38 million is a lightweight prefabricated pedestrian bridge. So let's talk pedestrian bridges. This one and Buenos Aires, Argentina, is seriously technically challenging compared to the Tibby Cotter. It's a cantilever spa, cable stayed job, 170 metres long and 6 metres wide. The 70 metre long midsection swings open to let ships pass through. Completed in 2001, it cost just 11 million in 2014 Aussie dollars. If you're going to spend 40 odd million on a pedestrian bridge, you should expect a big artistic statement. Chicago's seriously arty BP bridge by the renowned architect Frank Gehry is 286 metres long and 6 metres wide and it features acres of Gehry's trademark stainless steel finish and a luscious hardwood deck. It was completed in 2004 for 14.5 million US, equivalent to 25 million in today's Aussie dollars. That's what the Tibby Cotter was supposed to cost before the 13 million blowout. This bridge over the Sacramento River in Redding, California, doubles as the world's largest sundial. It opened in 2004 and cost around 40 mil in today's Aussie dollars. But look at that engineering. The span is 130 metres, three times the Tibby Cotter's span over Anzac Parade. The cantilever spa is 66 metres high and the thing put the town on the map, generating millions in tourism revenue every year. And speaking of art, in 2005, the Victorian taxpayer scored the multi-award winning Craigburn Bypass Pedestrian Bridge for 27 million, around 36.3 million in today's dollars. But that wasn't all. The price included almost five kilometres of sculptural noise walls, including an LED light show and landscaping. Now let's consider the cost of a couple of big general traffic bridges, structures that are engineered to carry road traffic with all the extra load carrying capacity that requires. The Hindmarsh Bridge at Goolwa in South Australia opened in 2001. It's 320 metres long with two traffic lanes and a walkway. It has 2,900 cubic metres of concrete, 
500 tonnes of reinforcement and 640 tonnes of steel girders, several times more than the Tibby Cotter. And it cost just 20 million in today's dollars. In other words, it was about half the price of the Tibby Cotter Bridge. The Seacliff Bridge on the coast road to Wollongong is 665 metres long and 40 metres high. It's got two general traffic lanes and a broad pedestrian and cycle path. To construct the sea cliff, they had to truck in 60,000 tonnes of rock just to build the sea level access track. 11,000 cubic metres of concrete and hundreds of tonnes of reinforcement were required and it took 18 months to complete. It came in for just 49 million in 2005. That's about 63 million in 2014 dollars. Is it really credible that the little lightweight Tibby Cotter Bridge with a tiny fraction of this material and no engineering challenges could cost 70% of the price of this mighty structure? Or is Duncan Gay just careless with your money? You be the judge. It's 8.25 on a Thursday morning and pedestrians and cycle commuters are streaming across the Tibby Cotter Bridge on their way to work. Not. 